So Ryan, I saw you in the game against Washington and you were hit a lot. That's just kind of what happened that game. But I was struck by the fact that I've seen other quarterbacks having a similar type of day start to get pretty frustrated and get really angry either with themselves or with their teammates. That never happened for you. You were always positive. You were always encouraging the other guys on the sideline. Is that something that you've had to work at as a leader or is that just kind of your disposition as a player, as a person, as a leader? I think it's just knowing who you're working with, right? Some guys, they respond better to you kind of getting on them and, and being kind of hard on them. And some guys don't respond to that well at all. They'll sh actually shut down and go the other way. So just knowing who you're working with and, and how guys respond and, and what they need. So, you know, just felt like in that moment, it was better to be on the encouraging side and, and try to pump your tires a little bit and, and get some um, some confidence and some positivity going that, uh, that I had faith in them and we just need to go out and do our jobs. Is that a skill set that you've had to work on over your career? kind of figuring out how to read the room almost and figure out what works best for what guy? Yeah, no doubt. It's something that, you know, you're constantly working to, to build those relationships, um, you know, grow as a leader in, in everything you do. And, and part of that is building those relationships, understanding guys and, and how they function, what makes them tick, how they respond to certain types of coaching or, uh, or encouragement or praise, and uh, just using that to help motivate. Because at the end of the day, uh, we're all in this thing together, and it's my job to, to go out there and try to help every guy that steps on the field play their best football. That's a lot of extra work almost that you have to do for your position that other positions maybe don't have to worry about. Obviously, you have to know the offense. You have to have that understanding. But you also have to have an understanding of the guys you're playing with, how they respond best to different coaching or conversations. You have to have an understanding of the circumstances this team is experiencing as a whole. That's a lot mentally to have on your plate. How do you balance all of that? Uh, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, it's uh, something that it's gotten a little bit easier over time. You know, just being in a lot of different situations over the course of 11 years now, uh, experiencing a lot of different coaches, a lot of different players, situations. And um, so at this point in my career, it's like, you know, not too much is new in that regard. You know, obviously new people, but just as far as situations and, and things you go through over the course of the season, I've been through most, most things so far at this point. So uh, you learn from all those experiences you had in the past and you're able to, to use that, that learning experience and the next time it comes up, you know how to handle it. You mentioned you're in year 11. Not only does that make you one of the veteran guys on the team, it makes you one of the older guys in the room, just in the locker room. Um, does that help you at all, being a leadership position, being an older guy? Maybe it does. I still feel young, though. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the older guys in the locker room, but I feel young. Uh, most days, that is. Um, you know, I still love coming to work. I love being around uh, the guys in, in the locker room and, and all the different personalities and everything that, that goes along with it. So, um, yeah, maybe one of the older guys, but I still feel young, and, and no doubt they keep me young. As we approach the change in seasons, is there a change in football as well? November, December time? Does the actual football that you're experiencing on the field change a little bit? Maybe a little bit, you know, slow, kind of as a slow, gradual thing as the season goes on. You know, I think as you've seen like teams that can play physical football into January, late, late in the season, into the playoffs uh, and run the ball well and play physical defense uh, typically over the course of history have, have done done well, you know, as the season comes on, goes on. So um, I think that fits us well, fits fits what we like to do well. We just have to keep improving. You know, it's been a, uh, a decent start to the season, just have to keep improving and um, want to be playing our best football as you get into those colder months. Do you have to adjust the way that you prepare throughout the week to accommodate for maybe more physical games on Sundays? I mean, you, as the season goes on, just more things come up with your body, right? You're dealing with, with more things. The things can kind of start to stack up if you let them. So you want to make sure you're staying on top of your recovery, staying on top of, of any treatment, any injuries that pop up throughout the season. It's, it's pretty much constantly something. So um, just being able to heal from those things and, uh, and be intentional about getting the treatment you need so that you feel good going into Sunday and, um, and not letting those injuries stack up. On a national level, the conversation around Ryan Tannehill this year has been more and more about the swag that you seem to have this year. And I don't wanna devalue any previous swag that you might have <laughs> had, 
but it seems like maybe you have a little bit more this year. Is that a confidence maybe that people are seeing? Or is there something extra going on in Ryan Tannehill in season 11? I don't feel a whole lot different. Um, you know, I'm confident in, in my, my abilities, confident in the guys around me. And that allows you to go play confidently is when you believe the guys around you are going to be doing their job, uh, whether it's getting open or, or blocking in front of you, whatever the case may be. When you trust the guys around you, you're able to go out and have fun and, and play loose. And I think when we all can do that collectively, that's when we're at our best seems like this locker room is incredibly close. The culture here seems to be the strongest that I've personally seen it in a very long time. Yeah, no doubt. It's something we put a lot of thought and attention into. And, you know, as the season goes on, it, it just intensifies, right? You get closer, you go through these experiences, these emotional experiences of games where it's a close game and an offense needed to make a play and we make a play. Or defense needed to make a big stop and they make a big stop and, and uh, help us to secure the win. So those those situations where you know you're in an emotional situation it's high stress situation and you're able to collectively as a group come away with a win it just brings you uh, so much closer together so you start stacking those things up over the course of a season and um, yeah no doubt about it it really brings the locker room together does it help that you seem to be so calm and even keeled throughout the highs and lows of not just a game but a season as a whole I try to be, you know, I try to be consistent each and every day, you know, coming in, whether we're coming off a great game or, or a tough game, uh, just coming in, um, trying to push myself, push the guys around me, make the corrections and, and get ready to go each and every week because it doesn't matter what you did last week. It's all about what you're going to do this week.